All right. We've now been joined by driver of the number 78, Martin Truex Jr., the Five Hour Energy Bass Pro Shops Toyota. And Martin, um, welcome back to Kansas, a place that um, was really good to you last season. Um, talk a little bit about this track, what you enjoy about racing on it, and then how your team plans to approach the race tomorrow night. Uh, excited to be here. I mean, obviously last year uh, winning both races was was really cool for our team. And uh, this, this track, for whatever reason, has been uh, one we've been real successful at over the years. So um, not sure why, just, you know, seems like um, I'm comfortable here. I like the track and, and whatever it is about my style, the, the way I like my car to drive it, it ends up, you know, usually producing some speed. So. So far, it's, uh, today's been a little bit, uh, a little bit hectic, a little bit crazy with the schedule and missing a lot of practice time and all that. But uh, I feel like we have a good idea where we need to be and uh, looking forward to the rest of the weekend. All right, we're going to go ahead and take questions for Martin. I know we have several. Um, please raise your hand, state your name and affiliation, and we'll start in the middle. <laughs> hey, Martin, Randy Kovitz from USA Today. Off the track. Um, there's been some of this rumors about NASCAR possibly selling a stake. Sure. What do the drivers feel like? Uh, what, what changes would you like to see made if, if there is a sale? Just how could this affect everyone? You know, I don't know. We'll have to see going forward. I mean, if, if you know, I don't even know if we're 100% sure there's any truth to it. So I think there's a lot of questions right now. Everybody has a lot of questions. Um, you know, I think that the, the, the people you know, thinking about the doom and the gloom and the and racing coming to an end or something. I mean, that's just nonsense. I mean, I think that uh, there's a there's a real opportunity that if it does happen, for some good things to happen. So we'll just have to see where it all goes. But um, you know, I'm not I'm not too worried about it at this moment. We got to kind of find out if it's you know if there's even any truth to it, and then uh, get more details. So hard to it's hard to give much of an opinion when you really don't know uh, much of what's going on. Well, there's, you know, there's a lot of things that, have, that are done because they've always been done that way <laughs> that maybe we could look at. And uh, you know, those are things we'll talk out of, you know, we can talk about away from um, the track and things. But uh, there's, there's definitely some opportunity for some things to change to, uh, to help the sport, uh, help the teams, help, help the drivers, help just in general uh, everybody be a little bit more, uh, more healthy. All right. Go ahead. Hey, Martin. Todd Palmer with the Kansas City Star. Um, you mentioned some things that, that, you know, thinking about the future of the sport, how important do you think diversity is, um, you know, not just with drivers, um, but with, with pit crews and, and kind of behind the scenes for the future of the sport? Well, I think it's important for, you know, for anything, but I think if you look at our sport and you look at the people involved in it, the opportunities are there for anyone. You know, if you're good at what you do, it doesn't matter who you are, what, you know, what color you are, whether you're a man or a woman, there's, there's opportunities in NASCAR and you see across the board that that's, you know, that is a fact. So, um, you know, I don't even know if it's a whole lot worth talking about as far as that goes. And then, uh, I also, this is a place that it seemed like you've been snake bit here for a couple of years, whether it was the lug nut or, or just, you know, some unluckiness. And then last year to, to get those two wins, is there a different <laughs> feeling when you come back here this year? that this is a place you've now conquered and it's not a place where you maybe are always worried about, oh God, what's gonna happen next? You know, I don't think you ever forget the ones that got away. You know, no matter, if we could win, you know, like you said, we won both races here last year and I still remember those other ones that got away just as much. And it's still, when you think about it, you're still like, man, I really like to still have those, you know? So um, it, it's hard to make up for lost time. All right, Jeff, go ahead. Jeff Gluck from jeffgluck.com. Obviously, Kenseth is back, and there's been all this narrative about the younger drivers versus the veteran drivers. Do you view, view this at all as a, as a sense that team owners are, are saying, well, wait a minute, maybe veteran drivers, maybe experience does matter maybe a little bit more than we thought? Do you, is that any sort of indictment on what's going on with the, the younger drivers? Well, certainly in that situation, I think that is what happened. You know, they, I guess, feel like they weren't, you know, making any progress with what they were doing. And so they, you know, this was a good opportunity for that particular team to, you know, get Matt in there and see what he thinks about things and, and um, you know, see where they can go with some experience. So, you know, I don't know. I think everybody has their, their own opinions and makes decisions to try to better their program in, in whatever way they think is, is the best approach for them. Um, 
there's you know there's so many circumstances around you know this sport and drivers and and getting in situations and things like that so this i think was just an opportunity for them to try something and um and see how it works out to try to make some progress I mean, I think there's a lot of there's there's a lot of reasons. Experienced teams, experience behind the wheel. Um, these cars aren't driving very good. Um, they change throughout the weekend quite a bit. Times when you need to really think about experience and think, you know, okay, what way is this track going to go? Um, these cars are so sensitive to weather changes and pace changes and things like that. I think having that experience and not freaking out, saying, okay, you know. I'm, I got to be tight in this practice to be good in the race, or I got to be loose here to be good in the race. And that's the experience that you, that's hard to get. It's hard to have that confidence when maybe you practice and you're two or three tenths off because you're fighting a, an ill handling car, but you know if you try to fix it now, it's going to hurt you later. Those are kind of times where experience really, really plays in your hands. But I. You know, again, I think also just the teams, it seems like the more experienced teams have more experienced drivers as well, like guys that are together over, over a period of time, building that history. Um, it's something that history is such a big part of what we do week in and week out. Um, you know, it's hard to go to tracks for the first time or the second time, not only as a driver, but as a team and be really, really successful. I feel like you get better as you go back the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time. So gaining that history together, I think, is a part of the experience as well. All right, Lee, and then we'll come back up for, for Todd. I was wondering, um, I guess when I first got in the sport, they were, there was talk that these cars would never be over-engineered. Um, you know, Formula One, that's where the, all the technology was and, you know, the ridiculous amounts of money, IndyCar, same thing. Has over-engineering the cars kind of taken, you know, some of the competitive nature out of the sport? I don't know that you could say that. I, I don't know. Um, I feel like it's more competitive than it's ever been. I mean, if you look at the size of the box we have to work in, it's tiny. There's not a lot we can do. Um, you know, I don't really know that they're over-engineered as much as they are over-enforced. Rules. You know, it's hard to say. it's hard to say. I mean, you think about. Um, I, I just I get frustrated over Wednesday. You know, we get all these stories about you know this guy was illegal, that guy was illegal, and and from the fans' point of view, they think, oh, everybody's cheating. This is ridiculous. I'm pissed. I don't want to. I don't want to you know, talk about this on a, on a Wednesday or, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to watch racing because all these guys are frauds. That's kind of what people, a lot of our fans are thinking. Um, and you look at some of the inspection issues and, and I've seen things that happened this week and it's like, seriously, that is not why that guy ran third. That is not why that guy ran second. I mean, let's have some common sense uh, in the way we enforce some of these things. And then, you know, I, Wednesday inspections, you take four cars, if you took the whole field, 38 of them might have failed this particular week, you know, where you had so many that, that didn't pass. So it's just, it's a, I don't know, it's a frustrating thing. It's hard, to, it's hard to place blame on anyone. I know NASCAR's in a tough spot. They want to make the playing field level. They want everybody to, to, to feel like that everybody's got the same thing out on the racetrack and it's coming down to the best driver. There's just so much to it and it's so complicated. Um, but it is frustrating to just hear about penalty after penalty after penalty and and, um, you know, from the driver's point of view. All right, Todd, go ahead. Uh, Martin, uh, how much has Jim Watson been on your mind coming back? I mean, last year you're in the middle of the, you know, in the middle of the chase, you know, chasing down that first championship. You know, I mean, has, has it hit you coming back here a little bit? Well, he, he's always going to be part of our team. You know, there's, uh, you know, one of his racing decals is still in the hauler. You know, it'll, it'll be there till, you know, I, I guess our team quits racing. Uh, so he's always a part of our team. I don't know that I thought about it more just coming back here, but, you know, we always think about him for sure. And then I wanted to ask you, too, about Dale Jr., you know, 15-time most popular driver. Give me your sales pitch. If, if you're trying to convince – I don't have one. You don't have one? You, you like me, fine. If you don't, I could care less. <laughs> so, I mean, do, so you, it wouldn't mean anything to you if you won that award now that, that oh. Dale's kind of cleared out of the way? Well, it would mean a lot, but I don't want to give a sales pitch and – 
um, try to convince anyone. I just, you know, I am who I am. Um, I feel like I try to do things the right way. And um, yeah, if you don't like me, that's okay too. Everybody has an opinion. All right. Any final questions for Martin? All right, Martin. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your time. Best of luck this weekend. Thank you.